Welcome li uh, back. We're live on Channel 5 with Cherry Healy and Ron Mushiso. And later we'll be debating if primary school children should be taught about knife crime. And also, should drivers who use mobile phones behind the wheel get jail time? But first, the COVID inquiry continues. And Nicola Sturgeon was in a, a right old state yesterday as she gave evidence. Do call us 0207 862 2222. And tell us if you feel sorry for her. Now, let me just show you over here. Here is the question we're asking. Do you feel sorry for Sturgeon, because yesterday she certainly seemed to feel a bit sorry for herself. Have a look. There's a large part of me wishes I hadn't been, um, but I was, and I wanted to be the best first minister I could be during that period. So very, very cut up. Why would she feel like this? What did she do wrong? Let's ask that question. So claim number one is this. We've got to go back for this. She hogged the limelight. Have a look at all these press conferences. Thank you for joining us. I'll start with the update on the latest COVID-19 statistics. So again and again and again, she put herself front and centre for profile, for, and maybe to show that Scotland had, a, had a, a different way of doing things for England. So Jamie Dawson, the counsel for the inquiry, said it was her instinct to seek division within the UK. And deliberately, she did different lockdown decisions to England. And she said she saw, he said that she saw the whole thing through the prism of Scottish independence. So this is the second claim. She used COVID to make the case for independence. He makes a point, this, this lawyer, that she argued against imposing travel restrictions to Spain because if they did, they won't approve EU membership for an independent Scotland. And that she also pursued zero COVID, which was doomed because she wanted to be the person who got COVID out of Scotland. So that's that. Claim three, she deleted WhatsApp messages to hide conversations. Now, have a look at this exchange. I was very thorough, and not just in the pandemic, but in all my work in government to ensure uh, that things were appropriately, appropriately recorded. But in line with the advice I'd always been given since my first day in government, probably, probably was not to retain mm. uh, conversations like that on a phone that mm. could be mm. lost or stolen and therefore not secure. But did you delete them? Uh, yes. So... It was a very, very long answer saying nothing. And then did you delete them? Answer yes. Do you feel sorry for her, Cherry? No, because I do think it's, it's actually really refreshing to see an honest, raw sense of emotion about someone taking really the, the responsibility of that position. I personally, I, li I liked that you could really see how seriously she took that role. I don't feel sorry for her because I think part of the job is to be... Um, is to have people ask you really difficult questions. Mm. Well, did she mess up on those, those three points that, that I, I mean, one is, she should never have deleted the WhatsApp messages. She shouldn't have used COVID to, to put herself front and centre. And she shouldn't have used it to try and make the case for independence. I think the, I think the most, the spiciest thing here is those messages. Of course, she shouldn't have deleted them. And I know that some people in her, um, in her staff had burner phones. And <laughs> because I think, you know, she said because they're working from home, I think that's really dodgy. Um, I think in terms of being front and centre, I think if she was a man, would we be asking that? No, I don't think we would. I think she gave a very strong, mm. um, very strong presence. And I think that was a positive thing. Ron, what do you think? Well, you know, as a teacher, um, if I see someone like Nicola Sturgeon, I think she's one of those goody two-shoe types, you know. <laughs> she wants to get everything right, Miss Perfect, uh, just like a, a bully, but in a, in, in a sort of a different kind of sense. And uh, here, for me, I think this is just crocodile tears. I can't feel sorry for her at all. Not at all. OK, well, we've got uh, journalist Pat Kane we can speak to, who's a big supporter of Nicola Sturgeon. Why was, she, why was she in tears yesterday, Pat? I don't quite understand that she's done nothing wrong. Well, I can explain it. I know Nicola well. Um, I've known her since she was a kind of an awkward student in Glasgow University, helping me get elected rector, beating Tony Benn, no less. And I worked with her all the way through the independence campaign 212, 214. The reason why she got upset is because there's one thing about Nicola Sturgeon that people talk about her, her success and her impregnability as a politician. The one thing about the reason why that's the case, one of the reasons, is that she's so relatable to a Scottish audience. She's a working class lawyer, made good. She works 10 times harder than anybody else in the room. And one of the, the, the kind of the, the underlying message of Scottish independence for many years has been 
uh, demonstrate that we're worthy of it through extreme competence, mm. by doing things better, by being more efficient, by being ahead of the curve more than... That's the whole... That's the, but, the but primary yeah, justification. I understand that as a, as a general no, thing. No, no, but, hang, on, hang on, Pat, sorry. I understand that as a general thing. But the, the accusation very specifically was this. She was briefed on what the Westminster policy would be in the morning and then deliberately, before it was announced in London, she gold-plated it, put knobs on and announced it for herself to show that the Scots were independent, but only that for reasons. So purely for no, performance that's, reasons. No, that's, not, no, that's I mean, there's an actual bit in the testimony yesterday where she says, um, I wish that I could have uh, established a uh, lockdown earlier, two, one or two weeks earlier than the, U the, the, the UK government was allowing. On that very day, the Cheltenham races were allowed to roar fantastically and actually, as we understand retrospectively, doubled the amount of infections as a result of that particular event, let loose by Boris well, Johnson. Ron, Ron, Ron so even, said, even, oh, in, even, in, even, Pat, even in her, Ron, Ron, even in her discussion... I think, I think she was just trying to be different because, because of independence. No, no, Ron, she nonsense. was absolutely, absolutely correct. She was, she was trying to be different. She was trying to be different because every time I listen to both the Prime Minister's uh, 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 conference and then her conference, she would always do something slightly different. Miss Goody Two-Shoe. She's got what's coming for us. That's, a, that's an extremely trivial accusation to make. She's standing there giving the facts to a, a worried citizenry. She has a signed But the citizenship is a united the, the kingdom. Is we are one country. We are that. one country. Scotland is but not actually, independent. But actually, Scotland is a, is a No, we are one country, the United with, Kingdom. With, with national health powers devolved to that country. Please get your facts right. But we are but one she had country. A distinct the, health responsibility and was she, exercising that. What she could have done, what she could have done is adhere to the government's advice, work together with the government, instead of trying to be different at every she single stage. A, a government leader. that, ign that, government that so ignored what, what, what is the criticism of her doing what about, something What about, the, so, so there's, a, there's a, I just want to show you this. The, I think we got this clip of Boris Johnson. Now, now um, this is about why is at the end of this, all this thing, politicians are asked, right, where are the WhatsApp messages? And they find every reason under the sun why they haven't got. So Boris Johnson had the most creative reason. Have a look. I don't know the exact reason, but it looks, uh, as though it's something to do with the app going down and then uh, coming up again, um, but somehow uh, not it's, it, it automatically erasing all the things uh, between that date when, when it went down and the moment when it was last backed up. So I. I can't give you the technical explanation, but that's the best I'm able to give. I mean, that that has become a meme on that TikTok. Is so, it's like right? asking a five-year-old about their dream. Yeah, so he basically, <laughs> long story short, he deleted his. But Sturgeon was just as bad, Pat, because she spent four, three answers evading this question, and then finally she said, yeah, okay, I deleted them. And she I promised think, she wouldn't delete them. I think that's a general lesson for all politicians to draw from their practice going forward in 2024 is not to use your social media as a water cooler exercise, I, I, imagining that you can just get rid of this information after having blown off steam in the way that probably most of the deletable messages were. Okay. It's probably about complaining yeah. about people. Well, there, I mean, uh, she, she also, she, this she isn't, about, sorry, 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 this isn't about learning lessons for the future. This is about w whether she did something very wrong. And I want to show you this clip. This I is a Channel 4 News reporter. Messages, yes. Hang on. It's a Channel 4 News reporter specifically asking her during COVID about whether she was going to keep her WhatsApp messages. Have a look. Can you guarantee to the bereaved families that you will disclose emails, WhatsApps, private emails, if you've been using them, whatever, that nothing will be off limits in this inquiry? I think if you understand uh, statutory public inquiries, you would know that even if I wasn't prepared to give that assurance, which for the avoidance of doubt I am, uh, then I wouldn't have the ability. I mean, how can she say that and then delete them, Pat? I think that's the leading question. And as I say, I think that's the clearest point of fault in her testimony yesterday. I think that was a poor excuse and response. 
Um, what can I what can I say? I mean, it, 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 we, there needs to be tra transparency in a digital age is ultimate. No matter what you thumb out, it, sh it should be available. And if you're a public servant, it should be available. So I think I, I, all I would say is that later on in, on the day, on that testimony yesterday, she said, uh, "You trust me? I was following my own government's guidelines because I was. People are worried about mobile phones being lost in public and the, the information being picked up by malefactors. That's probably her self justification. Uh, what's also revealed yesterday is the degree to which she is obsessed." with doing the job well, I'd rather than doing the job badly, rather than spilling red wine up a wall or having pizza gate parties. The last thing you could say about Nicola Sturgeon is that she has a, a gargantuan work ethic and I think high principles. And I think that's her, that was her excuse. Okay. I'm I'm so together that I can decide what information goes to the, I think that was her own All right, all right. Under, understood. You made, understandably wrong. You've made the case strongly. Thank you so much, Pat Kane, for joining us. Big supporter of Nicola Sturgeon, as you can tell. We're taking calls after the break on whether you feel sorry for Nicola Sturgeon or whether you say, no, she's absolutely brought this on herself. So, uh, Cherry Healy, Ron Mashiso with us this morning. Later, we'll be asking if primary school kids should get lessons in the dangers of knife crime and if people who use phones when they're driving should get jail time. But now let's have some calls on this issue of whether you feel sorry for Nicola Sturgeon, it all got too much for her at the COVID inquiry, or whether you think, no, she's brought this on herself. In Scotland, in Dumbarton, is Kevin. Hello. Hello. What did you think of what you heard? Crocodile tears. What, it was, thought it was what? It was crocodile tears on the stand. Yes, I heard some of the COVID survivors' families saying that. She has been caught out. She's trying to make out that she's so hard done by. She did the best she could. She was the one that put patients in care homes, and so the care homes' death rate went up. She's to blame, as is Jaden Freeman. They're culpable. She knew about COVID in January from the Nike meeting, and she did nothing. Well, yeah, I mean, lots of people were, couldn't get in their heads around lockdown, could they, that early on, and not least our own government and Trump in America and all that. But I guess, she I guess the, she, she the did have tighter testing. rules than England most of the time, but roughly the, the same number of deaths. She doesn't care about the electorate. She cares about herself and independence. OK, Kevin, thank you. Janine is in Birmingham. Do you think Kevin's right? Uh, no, I agree with Pat. Oh, so you think she's doing the best? She can. Yes, yeah, she, she did do her best. She she was good. I had a lot of time for her. Ron, Ron disagrees you... with this. Ron, Ron, tell Janine why. Well, I just think that Janine, she was just uh, someone just thinking about uh, the independence referendum above anything else. Um, and of course, she she works hard. That, that's with every uh, leading minister. That's what they do when they get to the top. They work hard to get there. So that's that, that really? charge. Really. So you think Boris Johnson worked really hard having parties and telling everybody to stay in. And then um, Sunak saying eat out to kill the elderly, spread it around. I think the country, Keep, had, the, the country had to be kept alive, had to be kept open. And, um, and I think that is something that every minister across the whole world had to do. Central governments had to be operational at that time. Did, is Janine, nah. I, yeah, Sunak, nah. I don't think, it wasn't Sunak who said eat out <laughs> to kill the elderly. It was a, a comment that was made by a civil servant about his policy, I think, saying that it was a, no, actually, yeah, I think yeah. that's right. Yeah, I apologise. So yeah, so, no, no, it's fine, it's fine. So you think, Janine, that, that Sturgeon did a good job for Scotland, as, yeah, as good did, as she could? She did, and yeah. it's a shame that she's not in charge anymore because she was fantastic. I had a lot of time for her, I respected her. What was, what was the best thing that she did? What was the best thing that she did? Everything. She kept that country. She, she made sure that COVID was done properly. Oh, it was I done properly. She was such a stable presence and she gave well, such Ron disagrees with that. Yes, yeah. she, yes, she was. She was, she was. You, you say stable, well, yeah, so it's disastrous. She kept changing. She kept changing the, uh, the, the, the policies of what central government was doing to make a difference, to, to appear to be different to the rest of the United Kingdom. She was we, making decisions based on her judgment and we, they were different. But we, different are, you, we are a United government. Kingdom. We are a United Kingdom, one country. Okay, she's she's a separate leader. It. She has she, separate powers. Is, uh, is devolved powers, yes, but we are a United Kingdom. Okay, this was a national crisis. Janine, thank you. Be as a country. Let me bring in on that note, Darren in Glasgow. What, what do you think of that from, from Ron? Is that in the end, you don't, you don't fight a virus by having four di different governments, Darren? 
No, no, you don't. I mean, I mean, the most important thing from what I saw yesterday was an admission that um, that decisions that were made were random. Um, I wouldn't come to the hospitality industry. Um, and what we found ourselves in a situation when it came to being reopened after being closed for so long was that people were jumping on trains, full trains, full carriages yeah. on their way to Newcastle, Liverpool, Manchester, Carlisle, because they couldn't have the same arrangements they could have here. So the whole of Scotland was down there going to hotels, restaurants, bars, yeah. but we all bled up here. And these things were done randomly and it was obvious they were random. And that's the most frustrating thing because that sector, the nighttime economy in Scotland, has now finished. Oh, is that right? It never recovered? It's never recovered. It never will. Oh, that's terrible. That's terrible. And Darren, Darren, I feel sorry for you as well because I, and I agree with what you're saying there because devolution um, in a crisis, uh, in this case, just didn't work. We needed to be united. And unfortunately, what you found was different people in different parts of the country doing different things, and that's exactly what you ended up... But that happened, that happened here as well. There were different counties that had different policies, and people were county hopping, going to bars and restaurants. Well, there was... Uh, is that right? I don't I know. I'm, I'm just... Maybe different police forces? I, don't, I mean, certainly in Wales, they had a street in Wales where you had pubs open on one side, yeah. and the other side was in England, and the pub was closed, or vice versa. Callum is in Edinburgh. What do you think about, about that? That this, this is, uh, just shows that, Scot that Scot you know, Scotland can't be in Independent. Hello. Hi, Callum. It's all yours. Yes, good. Yes, I feel sorry for Nicola Sturgeon. And none of us has gone through a, a, a pandemic like we did, and there were no rules to start with. And I don't like the witch hunt that's going and why they're having a inquiry, uh, uh, to me, that's a total waste of money. Nicola was the best. I mean, I, I'm, I'm against independence, but Nicola Sturgeon was the best for Scotland. OK, Callum, the thank best. you. She, Sheena in her. Angus, you agree with that? Right. Go on, Sheena. Yes, hi. Do you agree with that? Uh, yes, yes, I agree with everything Callum just said. So you think she did the best? Uh, she, she was the best person for Scotland and she did have it. And you, I'm sensing you I, feel that as I well. I absolutely agree. It was unprecedented what happened. I, I thought she was stable and available and she made her own decisions and she did it in a very strong way. She did her best to look different to the rest of the country. She made her own separate decisions because she has a brain, she's critically so she, thinking. You she's, don't think she made exactly separate what decisions to make it look as if Scotland was a no, separate country? I think, no, not at all. I think she made her own decisions, you know, we, we looked which at, we want from our leaders. We looked at national spending during the, um, the, 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 the First World War and Second World War, where national spending went up past 60% of GDP. And it, it happened in a spike in, uh, during this COVID 2022. Yeah. But when we had this national crisis, we had national governments, we had national leadership joined together. We didn't have separations, we didn't have devolution mm. in that sense. So all, what I'm asking for is, fair enough, you could say that she works hard. Most leaders do work hard. But when it comes to something, a crisis like this, we need to be united. Just one united government. we stand. All right. Sh Sheena, thank you. Karen in Aberdeen, should you agree with that? Well, I don't, I don't feel sorry for Nicholas Sturgeon. She wanted to look better than Westminster yes. at the time. And what annoys me is, and I do, she was on BBC every morning in front of them cameras trying to make herself look good. She's, every household in Scotland got a letter uh, about COVID. It said nothing that she didn't say on the BBC every morning. And that costs the taxpayer £700,000. But, she, but they, I mean, you're almost suggesting she just wanted to be on TV every day. She wanted to look popular, like better than Boris Johnson, or you know, she had to look like she was doing better. Okay, and she I like Karen. Let me see if we we'll see if we can get like Marion Karen. in Glasgow. Do you agree with Karen or not? No, I don't. I believe. Um, I would like to ask your your gentleman guest there Ron, yeah. what what he thinks of Boris Johnson, his boss, when uh, whoever made the decision for Cheltenham to go ahead when um, it cost all these people, you know, to, to catch All right, COVID. we've only got 30 seconds till our break, so I'll let Ron answer. Well, you know, Marion, you know, the thing about the COVID-19 is that no one anticipated what was going to happen 
and people were put under pressure to make decisions at quick next speed. And therefore, mistakes were, were, did take place. And Boris Johnson has re resigned as a result of that and is no longer uh, PM, he's no longer an MP. So he has had uh, his, uh, his, his, his day in office, his day of judgment, and he's, he's moved he's on. He's gone. All right, Marianne, are you satisfied with that, yes or no? No, not because he's, okay. he's evading me asking him a question there when he's saying how he can be so understanding of Boris when he's not understanding of Nicola Sturgeon. Oh, no. Understood. no. I, I, no. Listen, I'll pause it only because we've got to go to our break and I can hear Ron saying no. Uh, <laughs> thank you for your calls. I'll